let us all that we can to build a better future. So Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi was confronted. But, you know, it's it's not only Nancy Pelosi, the old hag bag herself, that's being confronted. It's Joe Biden. It's all these jag off politicians, all of them, because they're pieces of shite, which is what they are. They always have been, always will be. So recently, Nancy Pelosi was interrupted by a Palestinian activist at a DNC fundraiser in Seattle, Washington, D.C. And let's face it, um, the filth in the room that stands up and applauds Nancy, I don't think they realize that she's doing such a fantastic job of doing insider trading. That's right. So while they're all applauding Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, they fail to realize that uh, she doesn't really give a damn what they think. She, at this point, now, how old is Nancy? 88, 87 years old? What is she doing? So I'll pull up this video from Hotspot, so let's go ahead and play it. Nancy Pelosi, you are complicit in the Israeli crime of genocide. I'm an Iraqi refugee, and I watch your government. You represent, kill a million of my people. You killed 70,000 Afghans, and now over 30,000 Palestinians have died due to your complicity. We demand an end to the Zionist occupation of Palestine. We demand an end to the 17-year-long brutal siege of Gaza to be lifted. We demand an end. And the occupation now! 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 See, all these people who are standing up and applauding, and I'll just rewind that again so you could see that on the whole, whole audience. These are the same people who say, We welcome everybody into our house. There's no hate said here. We must stop Trump. Vote Democrat to save democracy. But as soon as you see somebody heroically stand up and challenge one of their oh so fantastic Democratic lawmakers, when you see them, that one person have the courage, they're like, oh, how dare you? Or you need to listen. They're trying to help. They're trying to help. They're trying to help. But no, they're not helping. They never will help because these politicians don't like us. They don't think about us. They don't respect us. They never have. They never will. Simple as that. Let's play this again. And the occupation sign. We demand an end to the 17-year-long brutal siege of Gaza to be lifted. We demand an end. And the occupation now. And the occupation now. And the occupation now. And the occupation now. And the occupation now! And the occupation now! Free, free Palestine! 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 Free Palestine! Of course. Of course, all those people, all those people who who secretly think they're part of the resistance. Remember, these are the same people who look at the picture of all the Germans, you know, giving the Zig Heil and that one person in the back who has his arms folded like this. All those people in that audience listening to Nancy think they're like that guy, you know, but they're all but they're all sheep. They're all listening to the Democratic Party. They're all listening to what the DNC establishment is telling them what to do because these people don't have. Well, any courage whatsoever. And look here, even even with President Joe Biden, more people calling him out recently. The uh, UAW just endorsed him. But more people are calling him out. There was also a moment here that is something we have seen recently in the last couple of weeks, which was a brief interruption. Take a listen to how that went here in the room. Any money that Congress gives the president to spend to build a product, whether it's an aircraft carrier, an automobile, a tank, or a staircase. No matter what that was, it should be built. Do 
So as you can see there, those were pro-Palestinian supporters who were expressing their frustration with the Biden administration's continued support of Israel in its war against Hamas. This is something we saw more than a dozen times yesterday when the president, the vice president and their spouses were speaking about reproductive freedom in northern Virginia. It was something that the president there acknowledged as a coordinated effort. Today, the White House, the campaign have been clear. They say, look, we understand people are going to express their views. They are absolutely have a right to do that and they're going to continue to do that. But it's a question for how the campaign continues to really respond to that as we head into this general election. And there's likely a lot more of that to come, Peter. Yeah, certainly uh, teeing up the potential for pretty long. Now let's talk about the consequences of people saying that they won't support Biden. Because the actions of people like Nancy, the actions of people like uh, Biden, it's going to cost the Democrats a lot of votes. And I, please check out my interview that I just recently did with Jamal Green and so many others who have been calling out the Democratic establishment. How many young people are invested or enthusiastic about supporting the DNC or anything associated with the Democrats? I played this video on Rumble. I think it's only fair that we play the rest of this here so that all of you can see it firsthand as well. I will not vote for Joe Biden in the 2024 election. The cost of a Palestinian life means more to me than anything else. We traveled to Dearborn, Michigan, home to the largest Arab American population in the U.S., to find out how the Biden administration's unwavering support of Israel is impacting their view of the president. I will never vote for any Democrat again after they what they did to us this time. Nowadays, if you're voting for Biden or if even if you're voting for Trump, you're putting yourself into a situation where other people's lives are in stake. We're really dealing with a very difficult, it's like a, between a rock and a hard place at that point. Honestly, I'm leaning towards not voting in the first place. So I pray and hope at that point there's going to be some sort of a change. We're not just ticking a box because we have no choice. I don't see any difference in the policy between both of them, at least about Trump. You know what he's going to do. You will not feel betrayed. I mean, I really feel betrayed with what uh, Biden did this time. And with 25,000 dead Palestinian men, women, and children, and the number's still upticking and going up and up and up and up and up. And then, by the way, again, last I checked, Biden is president of the United States. He could, in theory, use his political power to call for a ceasefire. He could call for a ceasefire and all this stuff in Yemen, Ukraine, Gaza. He could do that. But he's not because it's bad for the war profiteers. It's bad for the investors. See, there's money to be made here. They don't care about the blood in the streets. If they don't care about the American people, what makes you think they care about anyone overseas? And of course, these voters, Arab and Muslim voters, are choosing not to support the Democrats. You see, Trump, a lot can be said about him, but at least he's up front with his BS. At least you kind of know where you stand with him. I'll make the controversial statement and say he's probably been the most transparent president in U.S. history. I know where he stands. Oh, he told the truth. He told the truth during the Republican primary. I give these people money. They do what I say. You think Trump's the only person who's bought off a politician? No. We see it happen all the time. Legalized bribery. When Trump said, hey, when the reporter, when asked him during his administration, why are we in Syria? He didn't say we're there for freedom or reconstruction or preserving liberty or protecting the people. You, you get that from an Obama or a Bush Sr. or Bush Jr. or a Ronnie Boy Reagan. You get that from a Biden. But Trump just said, no, no, we're, 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 we're there for the oil. We're there for the oil. We're there for the resources. All these needless wars. Think we're there for freedom? No. For many Palestinian Americans, the violence in Gaza is not a distant reality. It's very close to home. Do you know how many family members you've lost so far? It's uh, 20. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so four on Saturday, four on Monday, and 12 on, on Wednesday. A recent poll showed that support for Biden among Arab Americans fell from 59% in 2020 to just 17% today. A lot of our community members are coming to me. They're saying, Neda, we're either going to vote third party, we are not going to vote top ticket, or we're going to stay home. Surveys estimate Biden won more than two-thirds of the Muslim vote in the U.S. in 2020. But if those voters switch or even stay home, it could cost Biden a crucial swing state and potentially the 2024 election. In Michigan alone, we had 145,000 Michigan Muslims go out to vote, and Biden won by 155,000 votes. You know, we really went out for Biden, and historically, whoever, won, whoever wins Michigan wins the presidency. And really, I, I use the word that we, we saved Biden in Michigan. He cannot win without our vote. I think he's taking it for granted. When Biden was running against Trump, I thought, 
that Biden would be somebody who uh, would lead with compassion, would lead with humanity. I thought he would be somebody that uh, that was a little bit different, uh, but clearly I was wrong. History will not forgive him for doing this. We will not forgive him for this when November comes next year. We will not forget. I want to pull up this uh, statement here. Gray Walker joined third parties that state and local elections are far more important than who warms the chair of the Oval Office. Research who's running in your seats and in your district. Very true. Very true. Very true indeed. Very true indeed. So, again, you know, it's, it's, I understand a lot of you are burnt out by electoral politics. Yes, I get it. But I think it is important to participate, at least if you're living in a citizen ballot initiative state, to find out what citizen ballot initiative uh, votes or resolutions are up. And also, yes, consider voting independent or third party in your said state. I know this might be the last election cycle. I'm going to probably vote for a president. I'm burnt out by the presidential election cycle at this point. Nothing, nothing can be done or said to make me enthusiastic about the president. But I want to pull this up here as well because, look, Biden, Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi. You know, I know we had good friend of the show, Jose Vega, come onto the show, and he was one of the dauntless few that actually confronted some of these Democratic lawmakers, not only from Pelosi, but to AOC herself. And, yes, even Rachel Maddow with Ben Stiller. He was with due dissidents for that one. And honestly, uh, I, I couldn't tell the difference between who was Rachel Maddow and who was Ben Stiller at that event. But anyways, check out that interview uh, for, for another day. But this is this this right here. This is a story. This little video here. Story of a kid that an American family knows. And they don't know where he's at. Mohammed Abu Hussein is a teenager in Gaza. And on the mind of Mike and Nadia Ayoub. He's become a son to me. We love him. We care about him. A few years ago, the couple hosted Muhammad at their home in Dearborn, Michigan, where he received a prosthetic leg. Now they say he lives in a refugee camp, the site of recent airstrikes. It's very tough. I've broken down at times looking at those pictures. Since the war broke out, they've been furious with the U.S.'s response and want a ceasefire. Do you vote for Biden in 2020? Yes. Do you regret that? I do. Yeah. He hasn't stepped up for the Palestinians. Here in Dearborn, Arab Americans make up more than half the population. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, who represents the area, is accusing President Biden of supporting genocide in Gaza. Who will remember in 2024? I think Biden and just about every American politician has blood on their hands. Mohammed Abu Hussein is... And again, this is a kid. There's probably countless... Thousands upon thousands of kids just like him trying to get by, trying to survive. And what do the Democrats say? You got to be pragmatic. Let the system work out. Joe Biden's doing all he can to help out the people. Now, I stopped believing these politicians a long time ago. But what I find hilarious is people like Nancy still praise as these fighters. For all those vote blue no matter who sycophants, do you even give a damn that she's doing insider trading? Do you give a damn that she's been in power, that she's 88 years old, that her time is eventually going to be setting very soon? I mean, does does it make you feel good that you're stuck with something familiar the whole time? I know a lot of liberal voters um, are triggered by Trump. But what more can you expect Nancy and the Democrats to do when, by the way, something very controversial here, and don't give me the excuse of, oh, they had no choice, but you do realize that the Democrats, you know, people like Nancy, would support some of Trump's policies. Remember the most infamous one about how she was screaming from the rooftop of, oh, no, we can't give Trump too much power because he'll have the NSA, and then, oh, wait, she, she passed that bill. Or what about that wasted time for impeachment? Okay, here's the thing. You, you can have the House call for an impeachment. Do you want to know who the jury is? It's the Senate. You think the Senate's going to impeach a president? It's, it's, it's unprecedented at this point, and it's a waste of time. So many Americans wasted their time, but yet the Democrats and liberals want to do that. And I'm willing to bet that if Trump gets reelected, we're going to see all these Democrats and vote blue no matter who people screaming impeachment, 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 impeachment. And while I, I am... Very shocked to see Rashida Tlaib kind of break out of formation with the Democrats. You know, should she get reelected, I could see her very well once again falling in line with the Democratic Party. I mean, AOC, uh, Rashida Tlaib, Ilan Omar, 
Ayanna Presley, everyone who's part of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. You know, y- you gave up your whole dignity and respect and your political movement to be part of the Democrat machine. The fear tactics aren't working. I, I see people trying to bully and cause people to be afraid, but it's not working. No one's buying it. No one respects it. How do you expect people to respect you politicians when you constantly keep on showing your own hypocrisy? So go ahead. Keep bullying people. Keep on trying to push people around. But more people are going to be speaking out at Democratic events, as they should. There's a genocide taking place in Gaza. How do you expect people to shut up about it? These people have faces. Voters see it. And it's not only this crisis in Gaza, De- Democrats, but it's also for the fact that you haven't followed through with any of your promises. The economy is going to be the number one issue. Wait till people start protesting about that. Things aren't getting better. They're getting worse. And in August of 2024, the DNC convention is going to take place here in Chicago. Get ready for a roller coaster, folks.